the movie opens with Father Peter entering a dimly lit room where Sister Magali lies bound to a bed. She has been possessed by a devil named Balban, causing her face to become distorted. Upon seeing her condition, Peter insists that they have to perform an exorcism as soon as possible. Yeah, they do. He then calls his superior, Father Michael, and asks for his permission. The latter vehemently refuses, believing he is not skilled enough to handle such a situation. However, Peter disregards his order and proceeds with the exorcism anyway. He sends everyone out of the room and sets up a camera to record the process. Yeah, he does. With determination, Peter prepares to confront the evil that has taken hold of Sister Magali. Pastor Peter prepped a patch of dickled peppers. As soon as he starts reading prayers, Magali's bed bounces in the air. However, she is so strongly possessed that the exorcism has no effect on her. Rather, the devil starts undressing and seduces Peter, who tries to control himself and continues his spells. He sprinkles holy water on her body, but it has no effect on her. Soon, Magali makes herself half naked and starts pleasuring herself in front of him. I think we downloaded the wrong movie. As soon as she completes her deed, a demonic scream can be heard, and Magali falls on the bed, believing that he has cured her. Peter goes to check, but she suddenly gets up and leads his hand into her private parts. We definitely downloaded the wrong movie. Peter also can't control himself, and he ends up having coitus with her. This turns out to be a bad decision, as the devil enters his body, seems only fair, and possesses him as well. The scene then shifts 18 years later in a prison, where a guard goes about his routine of collecting food trays from the cells. But as he reaches into one cell, a shocking moment unfolds. Two of his fingers are bitten off by the prisoner inside, causing absolute chaos. We are then taken to Father Peter, who has now started living in the countryside of Mexico. Ever since the incident, he has been guilt-ridden, so he devotes much of his time in an orphanage, taking care of the kids. He doesn't deserve this position. One day, while distributing food, he is approached by a worried mother. She takes him to her sick son, Philippe, who seems to be suffering from a strange disease. Peter blesses him with holy water, but this only causes the boy to have a seizure. As a last resort, he is rushed to the hospital. Dr. Nelson then examines Philippe and reveals that four children have already died in the same fashion, but no one has been able to identify the disease or its cure. Later, Peter goes to a church to seek solace, and Dr. Nelson joins him. Peter believes that God is punishing him for his past misdeeds by making those around him suffer. Nelson tries to make him understand that he was under the possession of the devil when he committed the sin, but Peter thinks it was avoidable. He then finally decides to confess with Bishop Monsignor Balducci, as he thinks it is the only way he can attain peace. In the next scene, Peter goes to the bishop's residence and prepares to hand over the recorded tape of the exorcism, but Balducci surprises him by revealing that the Vatican regards him as a saint. He then presents Peter with a generous check for his orphanage. The tape is going to sell gangbusters on OnlyFans, after all. Overwhelmed by the gesture and the substantial amount, Peter hesitates and ultimately decides to withhold the confession. Later, we see Peter in his room, cursing himself for the sin he committed 18 years ago. Just then, he hears a scream coming from the church. Oh, Christ! He goes inside to check, only to discover the statue of Christ missing from its place. Peter then looks around the place and soon hears someone crying in the corner. When he approaches the person, he is shocked to find the demonic form of Jesus Christ. It suddenly launches an attack on him, and this is when Peter jolts awake from his nightmare. Shortly after, a prison officer calls him and reveals that one of their inmates is acting very strangely. She is refusing to eat and demands to meet with him. This concerns Peter, so he immediately rushes to the prison. Upon entering the cell, he learns that the girl's name is Esperanza, and she has already killed an officer. When Peter sees her face, he realizes that she is not sick, but possessed. The crazy girl then starts speaking in a provocative manner, just like Magali did 18 years ago. This means that she is possessed by none other than Ball Boner. Later, Esperanza's mother arrives there, and she reveals herself to be Magali. She then drops a bombshell. The crazy girl inside the cell is Peter's daughter, too. Magali urges him to save her if he really wants to get over his guilt. At night, Peter is once again tormented by the demonic form of Jesus Christ, who begins to choke him in his sleep, but he somehow manages to wake up and calm himself down. The next morning, Peter goes to the hospital, where he learns that poor Philippe has passed away. He is the fifth victim of the mysterious illness, but the doctors are still clueless about its origins. Later, Peter meets with Balducci and presents him with the report on Esperanza's condition. He requests permission to perform an exorcism on her. Balducci not only says yes, but also summons another priest so that they can get rid of the demon ASAP. The scene then cuts to Father Michael, who has arrived in 
in Mexico to assist in the exorcism of Esperanza. It is revealed that he is one of the best exorcists in the world and the only person who previously defeated Balban. That night, Peter cannot bear the guilt anymore, so he burns the tape recording of Magali's exorcism, but not before creating some backups. Through a flashback, we learn that he was actually possessed by Balban when the incident took place. He was forced to have coitus with Magali and impregnate her. But Peter somehow managed to get rid of the demon by repeatedly chanting God's name. In the present, he confides in Father Michael about how he's been seeing a demonic version of Jesus Christ. No matter how hard he tries to escape, he just can't. Upon hearing this, Father Michael suspects that Balbon is trying to possess him. Either that, or Peter's a fuck boy after all. Inside the church, a nun named Camilla is praying to Mother Mary. When a few droplets of blood suddenly land on her forehead, she quickly opens her eyes, only to realize that the statue has vanished. Camilla then starts hearing strange noises and finds a cloth on the ground surrounded by blood. As she lifts it, she discovers the lifeless body of a child underneath. This freaks her out, and she starts screaming for help. At this moment, the statue of Mother Mary appears and moves towards her, appearing possessed. She then pulls the poor nun into the darkness, corrupting her as well. After a while, a possessed Camilla bursts into the children's room to inflict damage on them. Magali tries to stop her from advancing any further, but she's easily overpowered. Fortunately, the priests hear the commotion and rush to save the day. They quickly put their divine spells to work and somehow manage to expel the demon out of Camilla's body. In the next scene, Michael and Peter visit the prison and confront Esperanza. They try to engage her in conversation so that they can learn more about the demon. However, Esperanza is only interested in talking dirty with Father Peter. The two priests then use their combined prayers to take her down, but this only enrages Esperanza. She breaks free from her chains and launches an attack on Father Michael, biting off his ear like freaking Tyson, which would make Michael Jake Paul, so I guess he's a f boy too. But before she can cause more damage, Dr. Nelson injects her with a sedative, knocking her out. In the aftermath of this incident, the priests have a serious conversation with the warden. They assert that they need to perform an exorcism inside the prison cell, and for that, they need to evacuate the whole place. However, the warden refuses their request, as they have some highly dangerous prisoners there. He simply cannot risk transporting them to another location. Left with no options, Dr. Nelson suggests that they put all the prisoners to deep sleep by injecting them with a sedative. The idea is unorthodox, but it's the only one they have right now, so the priests agree. They get to work the very next morning, and Dr. Nelson goes cell to cell to render the prisoners consciousness. However, one of them cleverly manages to steal the keys and hide them in her bed. After this, the two enter Esperanza's cell to initiate the exorcism, but shockingly find her missing. Elsewhere, Dr. Nelson is shocked to learn that all the prison cells have been unlocked. Before he can report this to his colleagues, he is suddenly attacked by a possessed girl. Shortly after, the priests find him in an injured state, surrounded by several possessed prisoners. They try reading their spells to banish the demons, but it seems to have no effect. This is when the possessed form of Mother Mary arrives on the scene. The prisoners also attack the priests, but Nelson sacrifices himself to to slow them down. Taking this as an opportunity, Michael and Peter escape to a room and lock themselves in. Once they are alone, Michael asks Peter about what sin he is carrying with him. This is because their prayer didn't work on the possessed prisoners. Unable to hold the truth any longer, Peter finally discloses that Esperanza is his daughter. He conceived her 18 years ago while trying to save Magali. Hearing this, Father Michael is shocked to the core. He claims that because of this sin, it is now impossible to defeat Balbon and save the orphanage kids. Peter admits to his mistakes and requests that Father Michael perform the exorcism. However, the latter reveals that he's unable to do so because the last time he defeated Balbon, he actually traded his soul with her. Father Michael then succumbs to his injuries, but not before giving Peter one final piece of advice. Never make a deal with the demon and definitely don't put your pee pee in it again. Just then, the possessed inmates break through the door, prompting Peter to run away from there. He locks himself in another room and decides to finally confess the sin he committed 18 years ago. After recording himself, he sends the video to Balducci. Peter then comes out of the room with renewed determination and confronts the prisoners. He appears to have become stronger than before, and his prayers successfully subdue the demons. The demonic Jesus then shows up as the final boss, but Peter manages to take him down as well. Just when it seems he's going to emerge victorious, a prisoner attacks him from behind and knocks him out. When Peter comes to his senses, he finds himself tied to a chair, surrounded by demons. Oh, man! Balbon then performs a reverse exorcism on him, aiming to extract the god out of him. This causes him excruciating pain, but he doesn't lose hope and starts reading his own holy prayers. As a result, Balbon is pegged back. 
temple, and her exorcism is rendered useless. Meanwhile, inside the orphanage, all the children start convulsing suddenly. Camilla tries to calm them down, but her efforts are fruitless. Just then, the demonic form of Mother Mary arrives and attacks her. Back at the prison, Peter's holy prayers finally manage to defeat Balbon. As a last resort, she proposes a deal. If Peter expels God from his body, she will leave Esperanza and all the other children, but if he doesn't comply, she will finish them off in a heartbeat. Peter thinks for a while, but he is determined to atone for his sins. Therefore, he accepts her proposal, disregarding Michael's earlier warning. As soon as he does so, Esperanza falls unconscious, and the children in the orphanage come to their senses. In the aftermath of this incident, Father Peter is hailed as a saint by the media as he saved the lives of 112 children. Bishop Balducci also arrives to congratulate him on his success. While the two talk privately, Balducci reveals that he deleted the video, but not before uploading it to the cloud, and Peter's confession is now bound by a sacred seal. He then asks Peter if he would like to work as a counselor in the Vatican, to which the latter gladly agrees. At this moment, it is revealed that Peter is actually possessed by Balbon, and Bishop is under his control. She is now determined to take over not just a city, but the entire world. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.